Hi friends, let's talk currency valuation and foreign trade. Oftentimes, when countries want to import goods, they want them to be at a discounted price. So what do they do? They try to increase the value of their currency, therefore affording them a low price for imported goods. Uh, in contrast to this, when countries try to export goods, uh, they want to weaken the value of their currency in order to sell their goods at uh, a competitive price overseas. So it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It has an upside and a downside. So the United States basically operates on 12% imports, 12% exports. And that's basically what they're doing most of the time, is that they want 12% imports and 12% exports as a you know percentage of the gross domestic product or the gross national product. So uh, what we want is a moderately valued currency. Uh, previous administrations have tried to weaken the dollar to spur employment with uh, exports. Okay, while the rest of us, we go to the store and we don't get much for our money because they go up on everything because our dollars are undervalued. So, okay, if you want a lot of employment, you want a lot of people employed, uh, they want to uh, export. And what they do is they weaken the value of your currency. And, okay, when you go to the store, you don't get much for your money. And when you pay your mortgage or your rental payment, uh, or your housing payment, you don't get much money for that. So that's not, you know, so is there any money in the society to increase employment? Well, usually, for the most people, it's a loss. Uh, that everybody's, they, labor uh, and communism uh, keep trying to have what's known as full employment. They want everybody to work. Well, if everybody works, there won't be anything for you. You won't be able to buy anything because your money will be worthless if everyone works. Your money will just be worthless. And uh, what you'll do is you will, you'll destroy all your raw materials and your resources, and you won't be able to produce anything. Your country will be barren because you'll try to overproduce and will give everything away for nothing. And, well, you can't just give everything away for nothing. So at this time, about, uh, you know, there's a figure for the uh, value of the economy. It's about $62,000 a piece for every man, woman, and child in the United States. It costs us about $62,000 a piece to have this economy. Well, we're not getting a very fair, uh, you know, return on our investment. Uh, you know, our cost of about $62,000 a piece for this economy. We don't get much for that. We don't get $62,000 of the value worth of money and services for our, for our $62,000 of the cost. We don't get our fair share for that. Almost no one gets that. There's a few very rich people that get way more than, it, you know, than they're entitled to. And there's a few rich corporations owned by foreigners, the British and Saudi Arabia, to name a few, that uh, get quite a bit, and German corporations too, they, they get quite a bit of our money. And like most Americans, they get very little. They don't get anywhere near $62,000 of the value for their $62,000 of the input in this economy. You, you put $62,000 a piece into this economy. So anyway, what they want to do is they, all, every politician wants to go in there and they want to increase employment. Well, they want to increase employment by exporting. Okay, they want to increase employment by exporting, which means they're going to weaken our currency, which means that we're going to lose our standard of living. We're going to have a higher cost of living. So we lose ground doing that. Uh, of course, they're going to say that, like, well, people working is bringing home a paycheck for people that didn't have one. Well, it doesn't really change the equation that much. You produce some stuff, but it gets sold overseas, and the value of your dollar, well, that weakens. So what do they want to do with, like, imports? Okay, they want to raise the value of the currency, and when they bring imports in, they want to get imports at a discount. Well, countries don't want to do that. 
they don't want to give you their imported discount. And uh, okay, uh, they uh, you know you might get it at a discount, you might not. But okay, you raise the value of your currency, so uh, money's harder to come by. It's not as loose as it otherwise would be. There's not as much employment because you're importing, and uh, there's not as much employment. Okay, the value of your dollar that's not so bad. The value of your dollar is so bad, you get a lot at the store, and if you got a fixed rate mortgage, your mortgage payment's not so bad. If you can like keep a job, if you're one of the lucky few that I have a job, because only about half of the people work in the United States, the other half are unemployed. It's always been that way. We don't want full employment here in the United States. You don't have a right to a job. You don't have uh, an objective of full employment here in the United States. For one, we just don't have the raw materials for everybody to produce. We don't have it. You know, if you actually produce something with farming, you know, if you actually produce something, yeah, we can let you do that. But like most of these people want to take a raw material and convert it into a finished product. But we just don't have the raw materials for everybody to work. We don't have that many raw materials. We would quickly be depleted of our raw materials and our resources, and we we wouldn't be able to survive as a country or as a people. We just they just wouldn't have it. That's what's going on in China right now. They're using they're desperate for raw materials. They have over two hundred million people hungry, and they are desperate for raw materials to keep this economy of theirs going. So Australia gives them like several tons of iron ore to keep their steel industry going. And uh, other countries, I don't know what they give them. I guess the Middle East gives them oil. But the fact of the matter is that they don't have the raw materials to keep their economy going. And the United States is saying, like, well, if we don't have their, uh, you know, imports in the United States, well, our economy's going to suffer. Well, Bush, the elder, Bush Sr., uh, when, uh, you know, they took down the Iron Curtain, uh, Bush uh, said that, like, okay, he's going to invest all this money from the U.S. Treasury through Goldman Sachs and other uh, banking firms. He's going to run all this money through Wall Street right over to China. And so are these German companies, these British companies, and these Saudi Arabian companies, investors. They're going to run all this money through Wall Street right over to China. And they're going to say the United States has to import these goods, and other countries have to import these goods for people to like have a good economy. That's all that is. Wall Street says it's going to suffer if you don't keep relying on China. You don't have to rely on China. China doesn't like produce things that you need very much for the consumers. They produce things that you want, you know. They produce like things you want, things you would like to have, not things you need to have, like food, water, clothes, medicine, shelter. They don't have that. They're starting to have some shelter, but they can't even occupy their shelter because they don't have the money to live in it. So uh, they have over 200 million hungry people in China, and they're starving for uh, food and raw materials to keep this uh, work of theirs going. They're listening to George Bush Sr. just like they listen to Mao, and they're going hungry for it just like they did with Mao. Mao said give up agriculture and focus on industrialization, and while they starve to death. And George Bush Sr. tells them the same thing. Communism's over, focus on industrialization and give up agriculture, you know, while they have 200 million hungry people right now. So anyway, what does foreign trade do? Foreign trade doesn't do much for us. I mean, what it does is, uh, you know, it manipulates prices, it manipulates wages, it manipulates cost, and, uh, okay, uh, it raises or lowers employment. You know, some, when they, okay, they want to cut imports, they want to raise employment. If they want to, uh, you know, export, they want to raise employment. You know, okay, they want to do that. Well, is it going to happen? So if they cut the imports to raise employment in the United States, is the United States going to make it up with exports? Well, the other countries are going to say, no, we don't want your exported goods here. You just keep them. So with the, fact, the fact of the matter is, the United States' market is saturated. The United States could sell the United States and everybody would be just fine, but the United States keeps trying to listen to socialism and keeps trying to have everybody work. We don't want everybody to work. There's no future in everybody working. Everybody cannot work in this country.
So anyway, uh, what we're trying to do is let, you know, you know, the lucky few uh, have a good job. And uh, the rest of us have some type of uh, support to uh, survive with. Because uh, we're just not going to be able to let everyone work. We never have and never will. So we have like a mandatory retirement age of like 65. Well, the people that are older than us, the baby boomers, they've just disregarded that. And they're going to work on until I guess they're in the grave. You know, and so like there's just all kinds of young people that are saying, well, what about our job? What about our day and son? What about our career? What about our home? What about our family? And they're just not getting it. You know, uh, the people, the powers that be, want way too much for a house. And they say, well, they want way too much for a house and way too much to live so that there won't be a baby boom. Well, if they're not going to let you have a home and family in the United States, well, nobody wants to work. And so they're trying to make you work. Because, like, you know, if you're content with not working. I don't know why they want to do that. If people are content with not working because you won't let them have a home and a family, well, what is your problem with that? You know, it's like you, you have, like, this guiding light. You have this, like, bright star for people to go by. You don't have any light. All you've got is darkness. You need, to, you need population growth for capitalism to sustain itself. And okay, you've been trying to cut the population growth since the early 60s, and that's why you just don't have much of an economy, you never will. The fact of the matter is, uh, like 1952, we had just about everything built. We had just about all we needed. And, we, and it's just like been, they've been make work. They've been just making up things to do since the you know, mid-50s to try to occupy people and keep them busy. They don't really need anything. Everything They have an overproduction capacity still from the 50s, from the 40s. They have an overproduction capacity, and they don't need people to produce, and they don't need people to work. And they just never will. And uh, that's like they said, like, well, all these people in the 60s, well, they just went out and caused a bunch of trouble because they had money and they didn't have to work. So what they're trying to do is like they're trying to mistreat the people of the United States in the name of law and order. And, uh, well, that's just not any good. So anyway, uh, import-export really doesn't mean all that much because it's a null. It's about 12% imports and it's about 12% exports. So that's about all it is. And so, like, okay, Wall Street's going to say, oh, we're going to lose money. And they're going to try to put your, you know, your family's money on Wall Street. And they're going to say, oh, we're going to lose money. And so how do you, what do you do about that? Your best bet is to buy insurance. Your insurance is an expert at manipulating money and uh, preserving capital and preserving your capital. Insurance is an expert at that. So like every seven or ten years, there's going to be these market fluctuations. And if you have an expert handling your money, with uh, you know insurance, you'll make your like eight or nine percent every year, and your money will double every six or seven years, and it's just a sound investment. And you don't have to worry about these wild market fluctuations, because the guy says, "Okay, I make all this money with this wild market fluctuation." If he doesn't, if he doesn't sell when the market bombs out, he loses it all. So he's just better off with insurance companies, and uh, they're better at hedging than uh, than hedge funds. So you're better off with insurance companies. You get a whole life insurance annuity. Get a whole life insurance annuity and just keep adding to that. A penny saved is a penny earned. Thanks and have a nice day.